In this episode of Chop and Brew, it's Deja Brew all over again. We're going back in time one year to the inaugural Deja Brew Homebrew Competition, a one-of-a-kind comp showcasing lost and historical styles, giving both brewers and judges a unique opportunity to experience styles that are far outside of the everyday tap list. What's going on, everyone? I am Chip Walton. Welcome to Chop and Brew. Last year, I was lucky enough to take part in Deja Brew 2023 as a judge and experience many mind-blowing beers that I'd never had and some of which I'd never even heard of before this event. I did take my camera, as always, and I talked to some of the judges there and the organizers about their impressions of the first year event, what makes it so special amongst other competitions, and a little bit about what they hoped to achieve in the second annual Deja Brew, which is coming up very quick in February 2024, including the entry registration, which is cutting off in late January, still looking for judges as well. So go to DejaBrew.org to look at all those deadline dates, to volunteer to judge, to enter if you got something to put in. And just, it's a really great resource to see some of these styles that are just old world, unknown, forgotten. Great resource for that kind of thing. And a bonus to the video that's coming up just ahead, I got the best of show recipes from the winning home brewers themselves. They were super gracious, transparent with their recipes. They shared all those. So check out those recipe links in the video description below and bring some of these rare beers into your home brewery. Don't forget all Chop and Brew episodes are brought to you with support from Imperial Yeast, whose limited edition Danish lager strain, Huga, is now available for your midwinter lagering needs and the always appreciated Patreon party people. Join them in keeping the show from becoming a lost and or forgotten style at patreon.com slash chop and brew. All right, first Deja Brew in the bag. How did it go? I think it went pretty smoothly. It went extraordinarily smoothly. Uh, Very minor hiccups. Everyone seemed to have a good time. A lot of interesting things were talked about. A lot of interesting things on the table. Wide, um, wide array of beers, beer styles. Yes. Uh, this is exactly what I was hoping to get out of it. Just yes. getting to try so many things that I had never heard of or tasted or seen before in person. I am not sure which delights me more. The, the styles that made it to the BOS, the best of show, um, that were really you know, discussed intensely to figure out who was first, second, and third, or the the conversation over all of the entries that didn't quite make it that far by all of the judges that stuck around to sample all the flights that they didn't judge, to try the styles that they weren't judging, to really understand and see the breadth of what was entered. Like both were exactly what I wanted this competition to be. Yeah, so I'm uh, Dave Cole from Bozager. It's just outside of Winnipeg, so it's about an eight hour drive. And this this uh, competition is amazing because it's only historical styles, which is my, my favorite ones. I want to learn different styles, different flavors. Reading is one thing, tasting is a whole different thing. And this is like the perfect sample with people that actually want to learn more. So it's great. I've, I've been to a lot of competitions and I always ask for the historical or like spice or vegetable, all the interesting categories. And this is just interesting categories. So it's like, for me, it's the best of every comp out there. But they're not like, they're not impossible to wrap your head around, right? No, no. It, it, it's flavors you've read about and you, you know of, but never had a chance to try. So now that judging's done, now we actually try the beers. We still can't. We still have no idea who makes them, but we actually know what it is, and we can try styles we've never had before because we only get to judge so many beers. And now we can take a sample of everything else out there, and not actually have to score it, and just try and see what it tastes like. What do you got? You, what you like? What you got right there? It's a. I grabbed a Seif. Uh, it's an African beer. Amazing. It's styles you just don't see, and I want to learn more. All right, Joe, you've done a lot of competitions. How did today's competition kind of differ? It's great. I'm uh, really interested in these smaller competitions. I think it's the way that things are going to go. I think that the, you know, overall the number of entries in homebrew competitions is down. 
And I think that sort of tracks, there's been historic highs and lows in the degree to which people are entering the hobby and, and entering homebrew competitions. I think this way is the way to go in, uh, in the current moment, which is sort of more focused around particular styles and more focused around a doable one day event. So I think it's fantastic. I've actually been a real advocate for it. What did you judge today and kind of what did you learn from it? I judged uh, one category that was a little bit more on the grounds that I knew, which was um, uh, there were some Keller beers and a few others. Uh, and then an, one category that was, I guess it was called Sticks and Stones, which was a whole grab bag of historic and, uh, and odd styles from... Finland from all over the place, some with spruce, some with juniper, some with just all sorts of weird styles and ingredients that uh, I hadn't really done before, so it was fantastic. So you put all these styles out there, you got the entries you got, how did you decide on the category breakdown? Uh, the category breakdown shook out fairly geographically, fairly regionally. We had a Anglo-American category, we had a Belgian Netherlands category. Um, and then it sort of turned into more uh, traits. traits, characteristics, so a uh, smoked and sour category, uh, and then a sticks and stones, my current absolute favorite, right? Here are all the styles that uh, you need to involve sticks and stones to correctly brew. Uh, and, and I think that, I think it actually worked out pretty well. Led to good, I think, pretty even-sized categories, yes. which is always one of the keys when you're trying to break down competition entries into reasonable numbers, try to have equal equal playing fields for all the entries. So I think you had done a good job of trying to break them into categories that were fairly evenly sized amongst yeah. each other, giving the judges a reasonable number of entries to judge mm -hmm. and compare against one another. And what's kind of expected of a judge in this situation that might not be like your regular comp, right? Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's mostly just keeping an open mind, trying to figure out what the style is while you're going, and uh, and being aware that you don't know everything. I mean, I am a now a grandmaster judge, and it's fantastic to come across styles that. You know, I've some I've read about, some I've never even come across before, um, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's what I remember from being a brand new judge way back in the day when, you know, you, you might have tasted a few things here and there, but you've never really sat down to try to judge a beer, and you have to try to figure out, okay, is this a good beer um, in its core? And then, is this a good beer for style? And that's the real hard part for this. So I appreciate Garrick and everybody that uh, put this together because it's a really difficult thing to do for these out of, out of normal range styles. It's great. And you had some judges that came with some, I wouldn't call myself an expert, but getting to judge the Heimabrig was like important to me. And then there were other people like Dave, who I judge with, is like, oh, I have had this, this uh, Brown beer. So like, your judge pool was pretty informed, but also curious. Yes, uh, and I want to give full credit to all of the judges who uh, were open to judging against guidelines that are not as flushed out, not as sharpened, not as worked through as the BJCP or the Brewers Association guidelines are. While we had those styles and we did accept many of the styles that they recognized, there was a solid chunk of entries that fell without outside of that and so really want to give full credit to the judges who uh, went with some very initial draft guidelines to judge against styles they weren't familiar with just um, subject to judges I was really concerned we weren't going to find enough people to judge this right I mean specialty isn't always one of the most popular categories to judge at a typical or traditional competition but we had a Great turnout by the judges, yeah. highly qualified judges, highly experienced judges. Uh, you know, I think this was probably one of the best judging panels that I've had at a competition that I've been involved in. Right, and I think that really highlights the enthusiasm that a lot of people have, that there are people that are enthusiastic about these styles, that they will travel eight hours 
to judge a competition that even just accepts the style they're enthusiastic about uh, you know, d discreetly and on, on its own. Um, and a lot of uh, brewers sent additional materials about their entry um, that gave context to the entry in a way that you're not going to see in the traditional competition. So the, the enthusiasm that I've heard from the brewers uh, across the board, uh, something about this competition has really, really resonated with them and, and got them excited in, in a way that you know, a, a traditional competition um, may also, but this is a little, bit, a little bit different, a little bit different kind of energy and enthusiasm. Okay. Tell me how different the, the beers that made it to the final best yeah. of show were. The final best of show was a, 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 a range of things. It was things that, uh, it was mostly all things that you don't see so much anymore, some of which I've had before. For example, you know, a, um, a grisette or a, um, a London brown, which you don't really find commercial examples of anymore, but you used to. And so it was, that was one that like, if you've been around this world long enough, you will remember from back in the day, but it just doesn't exist anymore. So it was nice to see some of these things in the, um, in the, in the, on the table and just get to try them. It's a lot of fun. But then there was a, a Muma. Then there's a Muma and it, that was one that I judged and you know, you, you're going by, what you can find, and you do your best. Again, they, every every comp has its own different rules. A lot of them have like specific guidelines of how the beer should taste. This comp is different because most haven't had them before. So basically, the the organizers created a list of how it should taste based on historical documents and other researchers' information. So they, they take the best of their information they can, and condense it into some like the best they can for like a judging guideline. And we base this sample off of that guideline. And is it balanced? Does it taste good? Would it sell? Is it is it enjoyable? Even though it's like you know, just because it's weird doesn't mean it's good. Like it has to be good as well. So yeah, you, you have to find that that whole balance of that. And I think it worked really well. I was very impressed with the entries. I didn't have any bad beers. Would you want to put kind of like the gauntlet out there for international brewers to? represent their their home turf next year uh, i think absolutely like we had entries coming in uh from across the northern border in pet and so i want to put that out there like there are uh if you were like, pet travels a lot easier and lighter than glass so send them across the ocean uh, if you can deal with customs yeah that'd be awesome right absolutely. i mean so many of these styles were based on just written accounts of them Mm -hmm. So if there is something that you do have a great example of your local style, that's how we learn about it. That's how the judges learn about it. So heck yeah, that's right. uh, bring it up. There's there's something indigenous about where you are. Send it across the world and share it with us. Let us know. Help us um, carry the torch a little bit for what you're doing uh, in your geographic area, and we'll help uh, support and amplify that for you. Some of these styles, this might be a way for them to get a foothold, get yes. more people experience to them, get judging done, get some clear guidelines, descriptions, whatever put together and you know, maybe that that is the foothold to get them into more traditional competitions. I hope that this year inspired the judges, the entrants to pick a style that maybe is a little bit further outside of their comfort zone, whether that be one of the uh, more Scandinavian styles, whether that be uh, a German ale style they haven't played with. Um, I hope this is this inspired, and I and I hope that we get the kind of energy that we have this year to do this competition again uh, next year, um, and that the the breadth of styles maybe maybe successes styles not recognized by BJCP not recognized by BA, uh, what are what is the percentage of entries next year that fall outside of that? And yeah, so I'd like to see even more diversity in the styles. Yeah. Right, I mean, it's the first year doing it. You know, what do people know? Right, if I saw this competition listed somewhere, mm -hmm. and what's being accepted, it's like, oh, Rogan beer. Yeah. I've heard of that. I kind of know how to make one of those. Or the pre-pro yeah. or pre-pro right. lagers. Those are outside the normal spectrum of what you see in a competition, but they're not completely out there. Yeah, yeah. So I think we're still going to see a lot of those, but I would love to see more of these styles where I have to look them up to see what 
what they are. Right. To see more of the styles that we had this year that were good. Try to compare those against you know, memory. Of, okay, what did we have this year? Like, oh yeah, that was great. Yeah. Like, is this you know, a style? Maybe someone's got I don't know, boom in their wheelhouse. Right. Let's bring it back again next year. Let's see. You know, maybe we'll have two or three of those. So um, yeah, just more diversity in the styles. Just keep it crazy. Keep it. Keep it fun. Keep mm -hmm. it new. And hopefully, keep the judges interested in it, wanting to come back to try new things too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's my hope. Awesome. Thank you, Chip. Yeah.